Mighty God, let's bless his holy name. Worship the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the Lord Almighty himself, the Lord of hosts, the one who has never lost a war. Praise him. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Praise him. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. He's worthy to be praised. There's no one like him. It's impossible for him to fail. If he has not been on your side, where will you be now? Praise him. Give him glory, give him adoration. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, be glorified forever. I worship you. I adore you. I magnify your holy name. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come. The one who has made us more than conquerors, let's praise him. It is of his mercy that we are not consumed. Let's praise him. Praise him for his faithfulness. The faithfulness that is great. Praise him because he's trustworthy is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Magnify his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I want you to pray this prayer. If you want. But if you are going to pray it, pray it with all your heart. Cry to him loud and clear and say, Father, arise for me tonight and scatter all my enemies. Open your mouth and cry to God. Arise, O oh Lord, for me tonight. Scatter all my enemies, Lord. Enemies known and unknown. Within my family, outside my family. Arise, O oh Lord. Let your enemies waging wars. All the enemies of my soul. Let them be scattered. Because my enemies are your enemies, Lord. I am yours. I am your child. You said to Saul, you are persecuting me by persecuting my children. All my enemies, Lord. 
No, 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 no. All the enemies in my generation, enemies in my place of work, enemies of the ministry, you've committed it to my care. Arise, O oh Lord, arise for me today, arise for me right now, and scatter all these enemies. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I have a Father, Almighty Father. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. I have a Father. Hallelujah. I have a Father, Hallelujah. Almighty Father, He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I have a Father, Hallelujah. I have a Father, Hallelujah. Almighty Father. God, the Holy One of Israel, the one who said, Let there be light, and there was light. We worship you. You have never lost a war. And tonight, you are going to arise for your children, you are going to set captives free. You're going to fight for us. And we are going to give you all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people and prophesy to them, your enemies will be scattered tonight. If you believe that, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> and then you may please be seated. Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, good news. Today, God has added to us 13 children. <laughs> Nine boys and four girls. And so the total now is 52 babies, 35 boys, and 17 girls. <laughs> Let the boys shout, praise the Lord. Let the guy shout, Hallelujah! 
Glory be to God. Now, very quickly, before we go to the message of tonight, I told you, as from today, I will begin to announce uh, those who have not been taking care of their dormitories as they should. Cleanliness is next to godliness. The Almighty God is walking in our camp. He must not see any unclean thing in our midst. The cleanest, according to the report up to today, cleanest is all your province for. Followed by Rivers Province 7. And third, Lagos Province 3. <laughs> Number three from the bottom is FCT Central Parish. Can you believe that? Second from the bottom, Undo Province 1. And the dirtiest of, of all is Lagos Province 58. <laughs> Go and tidy up your premises. Tomorrow, I will give you the report again. So, take good care. I have good news for you. Even as I sat down there rejoicing in the Lord over the beautiful testimonies and the testimonies of tonight. Oh my, I think your hallelujah should have been much louder than. You know, I've warned us because mighty things are happening among us. We, we must not take any of them for granted. They happen all the time, so we begin to get used to them. We must keep on appreciating God so we will do more. Let me hear you shout another hallelujah. Well, so as I sat down there, God just reminded me of something that happened last month. Last month, I went to the UK, and the temperature was over 40 degrees Celsius. Things were hot. Uh, I know there are places, some places where you live that may be hot. Uh, I, I live around here. And I said to my daddy, I've traveled to where there was winter and you brought summer because I prayed. This time, it is excessive summer. Will you please cool it down for me? And overnight, the temperature dropped from 40 to 28. Uh, 
And for all the period I was there, Daddy kept in school. Now, so he asked me to tell someone here tonight. He said, right now, life is hot for you. He said, by tomorrow morning, everything will be cool again. Now, if that is for you, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Tonight is deliverance night. And our text will be John chapter 8. We'll read verse 32. And then verse 36, John 8, 32, and then 36. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Somebody's going to be free tonight. <laughs> and then in verse 36, it says, If the Son... That the Lord Jesus Christ shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Hmm. There's something about Jubilee. This is very, very interesting. The Bible teaches that. If God says to someone who's in bondage, you can go free, the fellow can say, no, I don't want to go. I want to stay with my, my boss forever. God said, if that happens, no problem. If anybody wants to be in bondage, or out of choice, they are free to do so. But there is no one allowed to keep anybody in bondage after God has decreed jubilee. If anyone tries to hold you back from freedom, like Pharaoh tried and Pharaoh drowned, anyone who after tonight tries to hold you back from perfect freedom, the fellow shall drown. Now that, that's, that's not a prayer. It's just a, a declaration of the way God walks when he declares jubilee. So, jubilee can mean deliverance. Jubilee teaches, if you study it very properly, that even if you are the one who became bound through your fault, that you got into trouble, because of your own error. When God declares the year of Jubilee, error or no error, you go free. (laughs) 
Well, God helping us, we will discuss a bit more about this tomorrow. Tonight is just the eve. The big day is coming tomorrow. And then the icing on the cake will come on Saturday. And please, uh, maybe I need to tell you, we'll be moving on to the uh, three by three tomorrow. The services there in the evening will be at that place. The morning services will take place here, but you will notice that there is a break, fairly long break, to enable you to get to the other side. But of course, if you choose to stay here, that's no problem. The, this will be the overflow tomorrow. Liberty f is freedom from every form of bondage. You can read Leviticus chapter 5, verse 10. Leviticus 25, verse 10. So anybody who says you can't go free, when God declares jubilee, will be fighting against God. And I'm yet to see somebody who fought against God and won. That fellow is not yet born. But when we talk about deliverance, many a times, some of us think that uh, for someone to be in need of deliverance, it must be somebody who is really mad. We think he's uh, possessed by demons. When you see him, his eyes are red. The hair on his head is standing up. Uh, <laughs> Someone could be under the influence of demonic forces and he might be sitting quietly near you now. Because in Mark chapter 1, from verse 23 to 27, Mark 1, 23 to 27, the Bible tells us that Jesus came into the temple and there was a man there with an unclean spirit. He was in church. Sitting, sitting down cool. Joining them when they were singing hymns. Nobody knew that there was a, a little devil living inside of him until Jesus showed up. And then the demon inside began to manifest. I expect demons to manifest here tonight. But after their manifestation, they will be ejected. <laughs> so what I'm about to do is that in the next few minutes, I will try to describe some activities of Satan. And by the time I mention them one by one, I will try to cover as many as possible. If you discover that uh, the case is describing you, then get ready for deliverance. Demonic activities will be classified into various categories. There's none of them that is good, but maybe I will take them in order of how bad. The first category is called oppression. Oppression. That's when the devil is sitting on you. 
And I thank God for the testimony we had tonight of that lady who said she was always carrying something as heavy as a bag of rice on her head until God intervened. And if you are carrying any bag of whatever on your head, you are going to be free tonight also. <laughs> to oppress means prevent from rising. Prevent from increasing. It means sit upon. It means put a ceiling as to how high the fellow can go. I mean, <laughs> there are even pastors under that this category of uh, activity of Satan. They fast. They pray. They study the Bible. They preach very well. And their churches remain the same. Attendance. 50 last week. 50 this week. 50 a year ago, the devil simply said, don't go higher. In Exodus chapter 1, from verse 8 to 12, Exodus 1, from verse 8 to 12, the reason that king that didn't know Joseph said that they should begin to deal harshly with the children of Israel. He said, said, I don't want them to increase. He said, kill their boys. You can say how, far, how much they are already, but no increase, no rising. Can I give you a practical example? In one of the universities when I was in the academics, there was a young man. Only God knows what he did to his head of department. The head of department just said, this boy is not going to go higher. And as a result, he just took his fire and hid it. So when it is time for evaluation or whatever, the file is not there. And he gave his life to Jesus. And he came and we prayed. And there was a military coup. And the coup, one way or the other, affected some people in the universities in those days. And the boss was forcefully retired. A new head of department came. And when he was going through the files of those under him, they couldn't find the file of this boy. It took a lot of searching before they found it where it was hidden. And he discovered that this fellow had not been promoted for years. Even though he was working very well. And he gave him double promotion. I don't know the force that has been hindering your rising. The fire of God is going to consume it or not.
So if you have been stagnant, you're doing well. Every time they do, uh, what to call it, uh, 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 and every time they, they check on how well you are doing, they give you good, glowing reports. When it comes to promotion, they forget you. Ah, that ends tonight. <laughs> but there's something worse than oppression. It is called repression. Repression. In other words, this force is not just sitting on you. It's actually pressing you down, pushing you down. Not just preventing you from rising, but steadily destroying every effort to rise. In Judges chapter 6, from verse 1 to 6, Judges 6, from verse 1 to 6, the Bible tells us of when the children of Israel offended God and he handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Bible says the Midianites we say, wait, allow the children of Israel to plant. Take care of what they have planted. As soon as it is time for harvest, they come in their multitudes and they will wipe out every harvest. In Yoruba land, they, they have a word for that kind of uh, problem. They call it Agbana. Um, you, you, you make the money. But at the end of the year, you can't see what to spend it on. Many a times, with all the money you make, at the end of the month, you are still in debt. Repression means destroy every effort you make to rise. When I was younger, an incident happened in our village. One rich man used his wealth to take over the land that belongs to another fellow. That fellow said, no problem. I have no money to fight you in court. But uh, we will see. The rich man will start the building. The, the man that he stole the land from won't say a word. The day the building is roofed, this other man will come and plant something by the building. By the following morning, there will be cracks from top to bottom in every corner of the house. So they will have to pull it down. And then the rich man will start again. And this man will come and pull it down. And start again and come to pull it down. whether it is your fault that the enemy has been pushing you down or not. Because this is the year of Jubilee, the fire of God will descend. Then there's something called Regression. Regression. 
And regression simply means there is a force pushing you backwards. It's not even a case of rising or not rising. They're just pushing you back, further back, further back. Like the story I told in the poem earlier today, the story of the lady in Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34. The woman was healthy, rich, until the devil stepped in, and then on a daily basis she was bleeding until she had spent every cobble. And instead of getting better, she grew worse. If God has not intervened, only God knows how the story would have ended. Regression is steadily pushing back until there's nothing left. Every force making you worse than you were before Steadily saying, no, now you are in form three. Uh, go back to form two. You are in form two. Go back to form one. And every form that is steadily pushing you backward, the fire of God will consume tonight. Some of you know the story of this woman. At least if you are old enough in the mission, you probably had her testimony. Worthy woman, living somewhere in the center of the town. I don't want to mention the name. On the story building, dry ground all around, no marshy ground. And she sat down to eat pounded yam. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a frog jumped on the pandemic. Uh, from where? No marshy ground anywhere around. And she said, okay, you jumped on my pandemic. She tried to slap the thing, the thing jumped into the bowl of stew. Okay, she said, she took the bowl of pandadia, rammed it on the bowl of seal, and said, I won't eat this pandadia, neither will you. And pressed the thing down. And when she thought by now the frog will have drowned in the stew, she opened the bowl of pandadia, and there was no frog. But from that day onward, she began to cough. The kind of coughing that when she will be coughing, she will be urinating. She went everywhere. No cure. Until one day she heard that we were holding a program in the town. And she came, she gave her life to Jesus Christ, and the coffins stopped. You will have your own jubilee tonight. But the story is more beautiful in that the demon that was causing her to cough when it left it went back to sender. 
And so the, the woman who sent that demon now began to cough. And she came to the one who had been delivered and said, I don't know how you did it, but the demon I sent against you had no cure. It has returned to me. What do I do to be free? May I decree to someone here today, every attack from the enemy will go back to sender. And then God will use it to bring that attacker to Jesus Christ. I can continue with the story, but let, because of time. Because the, the one who used to be the attacker now become more or less a messenger to the one who had been attacked. And then there is another kind of oppression of the enemy. It is called vexation. Vexation. It means attack at intervals. It's not actually sitting on your head or pressing you down or pushing you back but it comes and goes, comes and goes. In Matthew chapter 17, from verse 14 to 18, Matthew 17, 14 to 18, Jesus was coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration and the Father brought his son to him and said, this, my son, has a problem. Occasionally, when this demon comes, it will throw him into the fire. At times, it will come and throw him into the water. Just coming and going, coming and going. Some of us have that kind of problem. Today you are okay. And then another time it comes and creates a problem. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen people who have epilepsy. If you have never seen them, glory be to God. I only pray that you will never see them. <laughs> it, will come, it will attack at a time that will bring tremendous embarrassment to the fellow being attacked. All is well for one moment, and then the attack comes. And no signal that is going to come. There was a sister in the mission several years ago in the 1970s. Wonderful sister. But she had this child who was always suffering from vexation of the enemy, like I've described. she will rent a house and everybody will welcome her because she was nice. And everything will go fine until the sun has an attack. And then of course our people have this belief that uh, if that fellow has an attack, 
and he gets up while you are still there, <laughs> they believe that the thing will jump on you too. So as soon as the child has the attack, the landlord will chase her out of the house. Woman, you are nice, but uh, <laughs> we don't want danger here. And she's been going, moving from one house to another. Until one day, right in the center of the town, she was going to the market with the child. Right in the center of the town, the child had an attack. So he can no longer be hidden. The child had the attack. Everybody fled. And then she grabbed the child and looked up to the Almighty God and said, Father, my secret is out now. I have no help except you. Arise for me. And that was the last day the child had an attack. Do I hear somebody say, Lord, arise for me. And then there is another kind of activity of Satan. And it's called obsession. Obsession simply means the enemy fixes your mind on one wrong thing. Knowing fully well, that thing is enough to finish you. Oh, for some, it is something you, you can't even believe to be dangerous. It could be food. We might not see that kind of obsession here in Nigeria. <laughs> the devil is not likely to use that one here because he knows that uh, <laughs> you have to pray before you get the food. But in some countries, you will find people, their mouth can never stop chewing. They've just finished food, they get something that will be biting again, and then again, uh, obsession with food. You see some people, they look tiny, they can eat the food of 10 people. At the end of it, they still are not feeling satisfied. For some, it is alcohol. They just can't stop drinking. For some, drugs. For some, sex. Oh, it bother, it troubles even married people. They can pass a day without having sex. It is called obsession. That is what destroyed Samson. Somehow, he must look at strange women. When he couldn't find one quickly to marry, and then he looked for harlots. There must be strange women. And it finished him. I don't want to give examples here. Because it could embarrass some people who might be listening, who had an obsession with something that we told him this thing will destroy you. But whatever you are obsessed with, that thing that the enemy has 
settled into your system and to keep on doing it and doing it, knowing that it's going to ruin your future. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will be set free. And then there is one that is called confusion. Mental bondage. And it comes in various forms. It could come in the form that no matter how you study, you just don't understand. Or you think you understand when they are teaching you, but when they ask a question, you blank out. Or it could come in the form of always forgetting. You just keep on forgetting. Or it comes in the form of not even knowing what you are doing. Take the story of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. Daniel 4, from verse 28 to the end. Daniel 4, 28 to the end. <laughs> the king woke up one morning on the throne. The attack came. And all of a sudden, the king was sitting there and the wife said, your majesty, what will you have for breakfast? And the king said, meh. And the wife said, Kabisi, what kind of joke is this? You see bread and, uh, and Kabisi got up from the throne and went to the flower pot. Ah, the flower looks very beautiful, very delicious. And he began to eat. Very soon, Kabiesi looked out of the window and saw the grass there. Ah, the grass there is greener. And he went. Very soon he was, was wondering, what's going on? I'm feeling hot. What am I doing wearing clothes in this hot season? And he began to remove his clothes. You know the story. For seven years, he was having a nice time among animals. But when the Almighty God decided to have mercy on him, he said, after seven years, my reason came back to me. I mean, the reason traveled. When the enemy attacks someone with confusion, he will begin to call what is good, bad, and what is bad, good. I told you the story of uh, a boy. The father was a professor, or maybe he's still a professor, I've, I've lost contact. The mother, a professor. But this boy never passed any exam. He was always the bottom of the class. They moved him from a class of 33 children to a class of 35. His position moved to 35th. The parents did everything. They got him extra teachers to teach him every exam, zero. Then they brought him. And the Almighty God decided to intervene. The next examination, the boy came first. The teacher said, no way. They said, no, they, we can't believe this. They said, even if you give him the answer to copy, 
they will copy it wrong. So they decided they must give him another exam. They gave him another exam and he scored higher. Every one of you whose brain is in bondage, the fire will fall tonight. And then that brings us to the big one. The one that is called possession. That's when the enemy has taken over completely. Full control. Like in Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to 20. Mark 5, 2 to 20. And when the enemy takes possession, it affects everything. It affects the thinking. It affects even the actions. It affects the body. The madman of Gadara was not just mad. He was cutting himself with stones. When the enemy takes over completely, the fellow possessed will be doing things that he knows will destroy him, was cutting himself with stones. But when God comes in, when the Lord of hosts comes in, just one word, and all the legions that have taken over were sent packing in one day. So if you are even possessed of the devil, God will set you free tonight. <laughs> when we talk about possession, the number of demons who vary. The man in the church with an unclean spirit, he had only one. Mary Magdalene, she had seven. The <laughs> madman of Gadara, he had a legion. I remember one funny story. Way back, I think, in 1984 or so, here in the camp. Because in those days, if anybody goes crazy. They bring them here. We have a little hut for them where we put them and pray until they get well. So one had been around, I think, for about uh, four or five days and it was already returning to Nomas. And then they brought one that was see 100% under control of Satan. When they, because there's only one room for them. When they put him in the room, the one that was re already returning to Nomas, he ran out. I said, come and see these people. They brought a madman to come and dwell with me. <laughs> but thank God, both of them got free. I said that one to say this, it doesn't matter how many demons are dwelling in you tonight because this is the year of jubilee, you are going to be free. You're going to be free because declaration of jubilee it's actually a declaration of war. God is saying to the master, I decree, let your slaves go. And if you don't let them go, I will deal with you. And they have no choice in the matter. When they try to fight back, 
the one who is called the Lord of hosts. We operate. So tonight we are going to do something we used to do when we were in the first auditorium. At that time we were few and we had space. We stopped doing it when may God forgive us, we became many and we didn't have much space. When it is deliverance night in those days, we got our boys to begin to beat war drums. We begin to sing songs that we irritate the enemy. And when the enemies get irritated because the fire of God falls, then there will be manifestations. I think we are going to do that again tonight. <laughs> we are going to need the help of ushers, and we will need we may need the help of. Uh, brigades and uh, other people who can help us. Because when, when the fire of God falls and these people begin to manifest, we will need people to carry them out of uh, the crowd and bring them to the front. They may come wriggling like snakes well, by the time we finish praying, they become normal. How many of you want the captives to be set free tonight? <laughs> I mean, how you say amen? Yeah. On the battlefront, there is no lady and gentleman. So if uh, fire falls tonight, and God knows that you need deliverance, he will give it to you. <laughs> Nobody's going to take pictures when that time comes no cameraman is allowed to take pictures we are not here for show this is spiritual warfare of the highest degree this is the night of deliverance but before we get into that uh, segment. You have to notice something that happened in the story of the madman of Gadara. Even as mad as he was, when he saw Jesus coming, he surrendered to him. Because the Bible tells us that this man was all, all, always bound. But deep down inside him is a longing for freedom. So when they bind him, even with feet as of iron, he will break them asunder. He wanted to be free. Then one day he saw the one who can set him free. And he ran forward and surrendered himself and transferred the battle to the Lord of hosts. I'm praying for you tonight. The Lord of hosts will arise for you.
that is if you are truly a child of God. So for your own good, for your own good, if you are not sure of your salvation, you must surrender to Jesus tonight so that he can take over the battle and fight for you. That's number one. Why you must surrender to Jesus tonight. Number two, whether you believe it or not, demons are going to fly out of those people they are occupying tonight. And if they fly out and discover somebody who is not covered in the blood of the Lamb, they will just exchange house. They will come out of the one who is a child of God who wants to be free and enter into someone who is not a child of God. And you don't want any demon to sneak into you tonight to have enough problem without them coming. So if you are not sure of your salvation, I beg you. I know we are very many tonight. So I'm going to count from 1 to 15. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus and you mean business, come now. Let us pray for you that his blood may save your soul, that you might become covered in the blood of the Lamb. Come and come very quickly. I'm counting now. One. This is not a joking matter now. This is very serious business. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, come now. Two. Three. I don't think anybody should leave now. So those of you that I see moving, don't move now. It's a very dangerous time to say you are leaving. Four. The only people who should be moving now are those who are coming for salvation. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve.
13. Fourteen. Okay, those of you already in front and those of you on the way, cry to Jesus now. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to cover you in his blood. Ask him to wash you clean with the precious blood of the Lamb. The Bible says they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. Pray that that blood of Jesus Christ will cover you now and wash you clean from all your sins. Cry to him and say, Lord, save my soul. I don't want to have anything to do with the devil anymore. I want to become a child of God. Please, Lord, save my soul. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Thank you, Lord. Please let the rest of us stretch our hands towards these our brothers and intercede for them that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also, also, that God will give them a brand new beginning. Pray for them. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yes. Savior. Thank you for your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will know why cast out. These people have come to you now. Please, Lord, receive them. Yes. Let your blood wash away their sins. Yes. Write their names in the book of life. That blood that conquers Satan, let it cover them now. From tonight onward, let them remain your children. And when the fire begins to fall tonight, my Father and my God, let it be to destroy the yokes in your children. And let them serve you to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now I rejoice with those of you who have come forward tonight. Today is not going to be just your day of salvation. It will also be your day of deliverance. Uh, the counselors around you, they will give you cards that I want you to fill very quickly. You write your names, your address and your prayer request. And I promise you from now on, I'll be praying for you. But as soon as we are finished writing, you pass it, the card back to the counselors because we need the front where you are standing right now. So you return the card and you go back to your seat. Now the rest of us, let's talk to the almighty God now. This is a prayer between you and God. You're going to call on the Lord of hosts to fight for you tonight. 
Lord of hosts, decree to any force that might be holding me captive, walking in my life one way or the other, whether oppression or repression or regression, whatever. Lord of hosts, please show yourself to be the almighty in my life today. I want to live here completely delivered. I want to live here completely free. Talk to God and pray. Pray with all your heart.
Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If there's anyone that you have not already attended to counselors, could you move them aside? Move them aside and go and attend to them there. We, we need this place here now. Now we're going to begin gently. We're going to sing songs that we invite the fire of God to come upon us first so that uh, anything that needs to be dealt with could be dealt with. If it is a case of uh, the enemy coming once in a while, if we become too hot for the enemy to touch, then they won't be able to come anymore. And then we'll move on to some aggressive songs. Uh, then we'll sing along and then we'll see what, what we will see. Uh, the, so the, our first song is Holy Ghost Fire. Fire fall on me, as in the day of Pentecost. After that, we'll move on to In Jesus' Name, Every name was uh, bow. And then we move on to Holy Ghost Fire. Holy Ghost Fire. You, you remember? Good. All right. It's war time. How many of you believe you are going to win tonight? <laughs> Please, I beg you, if you see anybody manifesting near you, uh, help your neighbor now so that they won't injure themselves, just carry them forward. That's why we have this place free. So but we have to do this one in a warlike manner. Holy Ghost fire, fire for us.
Jesus' name, every knee must bow. In Jesus' name.
I want to appeal to you, particularly those of you who are in front. Don't look at what is happening as a joke. What is happening is evidence that the fire is already falling. We are going to sing for another five minutes. This is your opportunity to grab your deliverance. Don't play with the next five minutes. Go ahead and sing now. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. spend the next three minutes crying to the Lord of hosts, Father, fight my battles for me tonight. Remove every form of demonic influence from my life. Fight my battles for me tonight. 
fight my battles for me tonight. Let my freedom be complete and total tonight. Fight my battles for me tonight, Lord. Give me total freedom tonight. Thank you, Father. Rendra moko shekere makatunde remoko shanda. Mafendre keko remoko shekere moto tunde remoko koto romaka shanda. Fight my battles for me tonight, Daddy. In every way possible. Let me be absolutely free. Absolutely free to me. Fight my battles for me. Rekeke Rumoko Shandra Mahaka Kotundra Mahike Kiremoko Shanta. Fight my battles for me tonight. And your name will be glorified. Thank you, Lord. Rekeke Rumundra Mokoshike Kira Manka Shata. Every influence of Satan in my life must end tonight, Daddy. Fight for me, Lord of us. You are the consuming fire. Prove yourself today in my life. Ramo Shapo, Remo Koshiki, Remonti, Remo Koshaka. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Rerema ku shikirandri mu kuchundi kirema ka shikirema katana. Thank you, Father. Rerema ku kurende remu ku shikirende kirema kurende kirema ka shantana. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, my Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. In the name that's above every other name, I decree be free. Every force sitting on you will be consumed by fire now. Every force that is pushing you down will be consumed by fire now. Every force retarding your progress, pushing you back, will be consumed by fire now. Every force trying to destroy your destiny will be consumed by fire now. Be free in Jesus' name. 
Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. Now don't, don't worry about those who are, who are carried forward. You will notice many of them have sobered down now. They are already free. There might be one or two that are still manifesting violently. They will soon calm down. The fire of God has done its work. Good night. I see you tomorrow. If you have been blessed tonight, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Once I was bound by that chase of oh.